This video is on functions, um, specifically intercepts and zeros. They are a little bit different, um, but we will get to that. First, we're going to start with intercepts. <coughs> Just a quick review. So a y-intercept is an ordered pair that represents where the function intersects. Another word for that could be crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept is just the point where it crosses through the y-axis. You're probably guessing an x-intercept is the same thing. It's an ordered pair that represents where the function intersects or crosses the x-axis. So y-intercept, where it goes through the y-axis. X-intercept is where it goes through the x-axis. So looking at these graphs, if I'm looking at the example on the far left, the x-intercept, so we're looking where it crosses through the x-axis, and the x-axis is our horizontal axis. So it's crossing through at 1 on the x-axis. So notice in the definitions, they're ordered pairs, so you need two numbers. 1, 0. So I'm going to the right one, and I'm not going up and down at all. So the y-intercept, the vertical axis, which I just put in red, this line is going through the y-axis at negative 5. So again, it's an ordered pair, so I need two numbers. So 0, negative 5 is going to tell me it doesn't go right or left at all. It just goes down 5. So that is going to be the y-intercept. In the second problem, for the x-intercept, it looks like it hits our point at negative, or excuse me, positive 5. So that point's going to be 5, 0. And now for the y-axis, the vertical axis, it looks like it hits it at 1. So that is going to be 0, 1 as my y-intercept. The third problem is a parabola. So notice for the x-intercept, again, our horizontal axis. This actually goes through negative 3 and 1, so we actually have two x-intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. <coughs> this only crosses through the y-axis once, and it looks like it's doing that at negative 3. So 0, negative 3 is going to be my y-intercept. So the question down below says, what do you notice about the coordinates of the x-intercept? And what do you notice about the coordinates of the y-intercept? So you should be able to tell, if we're looking at all three of those, or excuse me, all four of those x-intercepts from the three problems above, whenever it is an x-intercept, we're going to have zero in the, the y part of the ordered pair, because it's not going up and down at all. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Same thing with the y-intercepts. When I have the y-intercept, there's going to be 0 in the x part of the ordered pair because the first number is going to indicate left to right, but we're not going left to right at all. It's just the, the y-axis when we're looking at the y-intercept. So I could give you a problem like this. I could tell you to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of y equals 2x plus 2. So on the previous problem, we just talked about how whenever we're solving for the x-intercept, we should have a 0 in the y part. So here, when I'm solving for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and I'm going to solve for x. Because we know, if it's the x-intercept, we know that y is going to equal 0. That's what we just talked about on the previous page. So here we're just going to go ahead and solve for x. So I'm going to get negative 1 equals x. So that x-intercept is going to be negative 1, 0. So now I'm looking for the y-intercept. 
like we talked about on the previous page, whenever I was looking at these y-intercepts, there is a zero in the x part of the ordered pair. So now I'm going to plug in zero for x, and I'm going to solve for y. So 2 times 0 is 0. y is going to equal 2. So that point is going to be 0, 2. That is the y-intercept. So let's move on to zeros. The definition for zeros when we're talking about functions is the points where the graph intersects the x-axis. So, algebraically, like we just talked about, this is, you know, where f of x or where y equals 0. Because when we're, when we're looking at the points on the x-axis, so in other words, the x-intercepts, we know that y is going to equal 0. And with these, we're not going to write these as a point. We're just going to write them as the x value, the point that it goes through. These can also be called, you can see them called roots, x-intercepts, like I just mentioned. Or you could hear them called solutions. Those are just some other words for zeros. So if I'm looking at number one, I'm just concerned with where the uh, graph intersects the x-axis, and it's doing that at two, right there at that point. For number two, this is... These are the two points where it crosses the x-axis. So my zeros are negative 2 and 1 here. I have two of them. Looking at the third problem, again, where it crosses the x-axis, I have a 0 at negative 3, and I have another 0 at 4. So x and y-intercepts, you know, a little bit different than zeros. Um, Zeros you can think of as x-intercepts, but again, you, you don't have to write them as ordered pairs. You can just write them as the point where it crosses. So a couple problems here. We're just trying to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the functions below. We did one problem like this previously, so I'm just going to do one of these. Let's do a fraction. Let's do number 6. So if I'm looking for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in, think about it, the x-intercept, I'm solving for x. So I'm going to have negative 2 fifths x plus 4. I'm solving for x, so I'm not going to plug in anything for x, because then I won't have an x anymore, and then I'll be solving for that f of x, or you can think of that as y. So I'm going to plug in 0 for f of x, and then I'm just going to go ahead and solve, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get negative 4 equals negative 2 fifths x. In order to get rid of that fraction, that negative 2 fifths, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of negative 2 fifths is negative 5 over 2. So negative 4 times negative 5 over 2 is going to be 10. So we're going to get 10 equals x. So the x-intercept is going to be 10 comma 0. I'm going to do the work over to the left in yellow for the y-intercept. So now I'm solving for that f of x value, which you can think of as y. So when I'm solving for that, I don't want x, so I'm going to plug in 0 for x because I know when I'm looking for the y-intercept, there's going to be a, a 0 in that x part of the ordered pair. So I'm going to have negative 2 fifths times 0 is just 0. So I'm going to have my y-intercept is going to be at 4. And it is the y-intercept, so it's going to be a point. 
So that point is going to be 0, 4.